company before they merged with Victor in RCA. This is Emil Billinger, the inventor and the founder of the company. Wow. This is from the 1890s. Whoa, that's old. So this was a project by RCA in the early 1980s called the Capacitance Electronic Disc. And it's really the project which unfortunately put them out of business. They spent about $600 million on this project. And it was an early version of the laser disc, but they were using basically the same vinyl records that were used for music. The only difference was they came in this uh, plastic case like this, and you couldn't touch the discs because uh, the grooves are so fine that even the oils on your hand would destroy it. So uh, you put in the whole cartridge into the machine, and then it ejects the case back out to you, and it takes the record and plays it. So it spins at 450 RPM, and uh, that would give you an hour and a half playtime for a movie. This is an RCA radio from 1925, and it's actually battery operated. Uh, I don't know how many minutes you'd get of listening time. And this is the antenna, which you could fine tune by turning it like this. These 45s, which became the standard for singles in the music industry, uh, came around in the late 1940s, and it was RCA's response to another format that was introduced by Columbia Records. But one thing that's interesting is they make the records slightly thicker in the middle, so when they're stacked in a machine like a jukebox player, they don't scratch one another. This here is the most famous gramophone. It was released in 1900, and it's the one that's used in this famous painting here with Nipper the dog called His Master's Voice. And Emil Bailinger bought this painting and then used it for his logo of the Bailinger Gramophone Company here in Canada. Um, he built it, he was an American, but he built the company here in Canada actually, so he wouldn't have to infringe on patents owned by Edison. Edison was already marketing these machines. Edison's original gramophone was mainly being used to record people's own voice or speeches of famous people, but Emil Bailinger saw the opportunity for music and entertainment. Here you can see some old recording equipment that they had here. They were recording here up until the 1970s at this location. I'm here in Glace Bay, Nova Scotia at a place called Tablehead. And in 1901, this is where Guillermo Marconi sent the first one of his communications across the Atlantic. So uh, right here you can see there's still foundations of the old building. And over above us would have been about a 400 foot tower with cables that served as the antenna. And uh, so they were successful in 1901 and then a few follow-up tests in 1902. Uh, and then this really was where all wireless communication started. It's amazing to think that this piece of foundation is from 1901. That's 10 years before the Titanic sunk. And of course, aboard the Titanic was a Marconi wireless system, uh, which they used for transmitting their distress signal. Um, and then the Titanic, the remaining survivors actually came in not so far from here. 